best beer store in the West with two stores at Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. You can now get takeaway Friday and Saturday nights between 5pm to 7.30pm. Phone your order through on 70210555 Friday and Saturday nights between those times or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au but orders must be received by 5pm on the day required. With Father's Day coming up, why not treat Dad this Father's Day to a Georgie's on Vista lunch? Choose from our Father's Day menu, our combo packs or our specials. All are listed on our website, georgiesonvista.com.au. Meals are to be ordered by 5pm Saturday, September 5, with pick-up between 11.30am to 2.30pm on Father's Day. No orders will be taken on the day. Email your orders to info at georgiesonvista.com.au and please include your name and phone number. Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from Georgie's on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise, in the heart of Caroline Springs. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us here on episode 37 of the Football Outwear Show. And boy, is it going to be a good one tonight. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic one. And um, looking forward to uh, looking forward to uh, uh, match day two of the Hot Heads Football IQ Quiz. And um, joining me in the studio, as they do every week um, now, Craig Filer. How are you, my friend? Good. Welcome back. Good evening to you. It looks as if, uh, well, it, it feels as if we're on every day of the week at the moment, Tant. So, uh, to be honest, I'll be, I'll be glad to get back into proper full-time work next week. It's <laughs> driving me well, so. Seems like it. Steve Curtin, how are you, my friend? You're another one who's uh, jumped on the full-time uh, uh, gig roll here at the uh, Football Outwear Show and the, uh, um, you name it, the A-League preview post-game review, the uh, Football Hotheads, Football Fans, and Geelong Region. So it's just full-on, isn't it? <laughs> it's full-on, mate. It's uh, six nights out of the last eight now by my reckoning. So oh, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a loan deal that's looking to go permanent, perhaps. No, it's definitely not going permanent. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> out of here. I'm out of here next week. You're a freaking bludger then. I'm doing eight days a week at the moment. Right, My well, hair's man. falling out far out. <laughs> I've got, got a proper job to start next week. Uh, yeah, all righty. Gentlemen, <laughs> a lot's been happening um, tonight. We've got an exciting, exciting competition coming up. It's going to be brilliant, and we're going to go through it very, very quickly. But, uh, Craig, what's been happening uh What's been happening in your neck of the woods? You're telling us you're starting a new job on the on, on next week. I am, yeah. I've uh, been lucky enough to uh, to to get a role uh, for a, um, another uh, company. So, yeah, I've, uh, I've had uh, I've just had five weeks of uh, of gardening leave um, and officially start on Monday. So, looking forward to uh, to that. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be more workload on you over the next couple of weeks, Mister uh, Mister Tonchi. So, um, yes, but That's uh, look. Looking forward to it, mate. Looking forward to getting out there. Well, not getting out there because I won't be able to go anywhere, but looking forward to uh, start a new role, yeah. So, uh, gardening okay. leave, have you got the best uh, front yard in town now? No, I've got a rental property until mine's booked and I don't touch my garden. Excuses, excuses, <laughs> excuses. All right, moving along to more important things. Match day one on Sunday in the Hopheads Football IQ Quiz just gone by. Saw Sebastopol Vikings defeat Williamstown 6-3. Steve, great start for the Ballarat boys there. Yeah, it was. It was a good contest there. Both of the guys did uh, very well. They were effectively like guinea pigs for our first night. So hopefully they've uh, paved the way for our contestants tonight from Hoppers and North Geelong. Yeah, you just and then that brings us to tonight, Craig. 
Um, match day two, Hoppers Crossing versus North Geelong Warriors. You've been speaking to both um, would-be combatants. Uh, what's the feeling like in the uh, dressing room? The smell of uh, Denko rub or, or, yeah. or is it, you know, um, getting the old um, Revenge of the Nerds glasses out? I can tell you what is going to happen. There's going to be a lot of, ba there's going to be a lot of banter between uh, both sets of supporters, I think, for uh, <laughs> certainly for for George's. I know, uh, sorry for George's for for North. I know uh, there's been a bit of banter on the uh, on the players' messages site, and I would imagine exactly the same's happened with Dean and the boys from Hoppers Cross. Cross now, you know. now, is it true that your son uh, Morgan is real? He's been sulking for the last four weeks because he failed the IQ test to uh, sit the uh, qualification for North Geelong Warriors. Any truth to that rumor? Yeah, he couldn't he couldn't open he couldn't open the envelope to find out what was in there. He didn't know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Steve, on Monday night, next Monday, or this Monday coming, a new time, new time slot, new day, new time slot. Match day three, St. Albans Saints versus Meadow Park, the West versus the North. That should be a good one as well. Yeah, looking forward to that one, as we pointed out before, NPL one side against the State League five side. So certainly a golf in the leagues that they play in, but will there be a golf in the knowledge that they possess? Yeah, absolutely. And then, Craig, match day four, next Thursday, this time next week, Collingwood City, um, a team from the inner city of the – well, the northern inner city suburbs, I suppose. Yep. They'll be taking on the West's own Brimbank Stallions. That should be a, another doozy of a contest next year. Yeah, that'll be a, another good, uh, another good uh, tassel or tussle, rather. Um, don't know much about but either, either sides, but um, um, I do know uh, the coach at, uh, at Collingwood City, so uh, he's obviously uh, slipped somebody else the, the go, and he's obviously too shy and – too dull to come on and, uh, and so, uh, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart this game show listen you've got to be dull to be a coach haven't you so there's no point in entering uh, quiz yeah. questions is there yeah, well, it takes no, one to know one as they say you're right you're spot absolutely yep. now gents a lot happening tonight so you guys are going to step away well as that we get ready for the news uh, news desk um, that's coming up very, very shortly. Straight after the news desk, we're going to go get straight into the competition. Um, episode 37 tonight, sponsored by the George Cross Football Club, and they're absolutely fantastic. George is on Vista Bistro. Father's Day is coming up, so make sure to place an order. We'll be running their ad several times throughout the course of the night. Don't go away. You're tuning into the Football Outwear Show. All right, gents, take it away. Thank you, Tonch. Uh, Steve, where should we start? Should we start with uh, the news overnight of uh, of the Champions League? Yeah, let's start with the Champos, mate. We'll go with that fixture this morning, which saw Leon Neal defeated by Bayern Munich 3. Goals from Serge Gnabry in the first half. And then just to put the icing on the cake in the 88th minute, who else but Robert Lewandowski to make it 3. So a comfortable win in the end, although Leon did take advantage of that uh, famously high Bayern Munich defensive line early in the game to create some chances that they just couldn't quite finish. So they go through a predictable result, you might say. And then in the other semi, the previous day, another result that everyone probably saw coming was uh, RB Leipzig nil PSG 3. So the two heavyweights from uh, Paris and Munich going into the final, which will be on Monday morning at 5 a.m. our time. Set your alarm clocks. You don't want to miss that one. Who do you fancy, Craig? Bayern. Um, buy, buy in for me. They're just they're robots, mate. They're typical German uh, engineering. They just do everything well. I'm just looking at the stats from from the night uh, game overnight, and they had 66% uh, possession. They had 647 passes compared to 328 of uh, of Leon. Their pass accuracy was at 87. Uh, percent They had 19 shots to nine. Um, so yeah, look, I think. Um, It'll be a good final, um, you know. Um, Paris Saint Germain have been uh, have been waiting for this opportunity, haven't they, for a long, long time? They spent mm. a lot of money to try and get to this position, so it'd be really, really interesting final. But um, yeah, I, I, you can't see past Bayern for me. Yeah, it's an intriguing final for that reason that PSG have invested so much in this particular competition to try and get the job done and not been able to do it. They finally made a final; it's their chance to do it. Can they upstage Bayern on their day? Yes, they can. But will they? I don't know if they will. 
Yeah, look, it's, it's a, it's a. I mean, they're both very, very strong sides, aren't they? If you look through the the, the, the lineups of both teams, they're they're very, very, uh, very, very powerful. Um, be an interesting game. I think it'll be very open. Um, I think it's um, somebody said last night. It's been like a little mini World Cup, hasn't it? In this little hubs that, that they've been having, and I think the football, yeah. the football since we come back has has been fantastic, and it's uh, it's really pleasing to see teams really having a good go. Like if we look at the Barcelona and Bayern game last week. If you'd got up and you'd have wrote down on a piece of paper what you think the score would be, there's not a chance you would have put the score that was uh, that that it ended up eight two. You would have said two one three one two all. You wouldn't have said eight two. Not a chance. No, no chance. I think uh, there was frailties of Barcelona leading into the game that we thought would be exploited. But who would have thought that eight goals would have been put past their yeah. defence? It's quite quite a shock for everyone. So. Now, the, Jens, uh, I don't know if this I'll is continuing from that one. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is, is this is true, but I did see a statistic earlier today where it said um, this year's European Champions League final is the first one since 1998 where two league champions are actually contesting it. So that's an interesting statistic. There you go. Well done, well done Stato. <laughs> you should put yeah. in for a pay rise, mate. That's quite Absolutely. good. Yeah. Very good. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, moving along. Move along. The idea of the Champions League it was the, the league where all of the um you know, no, the but, you know we, nation would play off, and obviously it's changed a lot since then. You get the top four yeah. from the big the big leagues, and um the the smaller leagues struggle to uh, even even get one spot in the uh, draw of thirty two often. So that's how it goes. So and just recapping again that that previous result from the day before goals from uh, Marquinhos, uh, Angel Di Maria who'd come back into the team and. Uh, Juan Bernard for PSG. Um, no Neymar on the score sheet. How much he would love a goal in the final? He hit the post twice in this fixture uh, yesterday yeah, morning. You've, well, you've got uh, you've got Neymar. You've got Mbappe. Um, you know, none of none of them on the on the on the team on the uh, on the score sheet. So, be very interesting final. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, prediction, Steve. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a high. It's going to go Bayern three two. Oh, very good. Well, I, was, I was actually going to go three one, so uh, Bayern three one for me and uh, Stato. Bayern Munich. Uh, <laughs> was that Bayern in German? Who oh, was that? Yeah, yeah, sehr gut. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that, that's all three words of German that I know. Um, it's the worst I, I can... Croatian accent I've ever had in my life. Yeah, in my life. Um, two nil, yeah. two nil to Bayern. Two nil to Bayern. Very mm -hmm. good. Clean sweep there for Bayern. Uh, the, uh, our listeners are, are agreeing with us. I think um, um, I think it will be a good game, but I think uh, Bayern will come through as champions. Um, A-League, right. Steve. A-League, okay. Moving closer to home. Last night, Melbourne City defeating the uh, Western Regions Club, Western United, three goals to one. It was an experimental uh, change lineup with uh, eight changes for Western United. So... They certainly uh, kept their uh, cards up their sleeve leading into the uh, into the finals in that one. Goals uh, in the 12th minute for Moody Najjar, his first A-League goal. And then it was Jamie McLaren on 57 minutes converting a penalty before Bessart Borussia coming onto the field, winning a penalty and scoring a penalty. That was assisted by uh, Diamante. And then, of course, Jamie McLaren, just sealed his uh, golden boot for the season with uh, an 86th minute finish there, tapping in from a, a nice little cross from uh, Lockie Wales. So Melbourne City getting the job done there. Uh, Eric Monbert's team marches on into the finals. Perhaps they are the, the form team leading into it, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyone could uh, anyone get the job done on the day in the form of Western United with uh, six, what is it, six wins in the last eight. Pretty good. Yeah, look, I think uh, Melbourne City obviously deserved the uh, the win last night. Um, it was an experimental side, as you as you said, Steve, with I think five of the starting eleven under the age of twenty one, um, and obviously there was two uh, young lads in Piraeus and Cavallo that came on that were also under twenty one. So very much an experiment experimental side for for Mark Rudem. But he said in uh, in his comments after the game that um, he took quite a lot from the game, um, but the players. Yeah, and I think his words were, the players are very intelligent. They know what's at stake on the weekend. And he was more important that he came through the game without any injuries. So it looks as if he's going to have a real full squad to go into the game um, on uh, on Sunday evening against uh, against Brisbane Raw for a place in the in the semi-finals. 
Yeah, that's right. The only maybe concern might be Oscar Dillon, who sustained that knock to the head, but he did continue on playing. So it was a good effort from him. He had a uh, he had a pretty decent game as well, even despite that. And so that game, six o'clock on Sunday, and then the other elimination final, five o'clock on Saturday between Wellington Phoenix and Perth Glory. Those teams are fighting for the right to play Melbourne City and Sydney FC in a uh, double header semi final. Those games at five o'clock and eight ten on uh, Wednesday. Uh, so midweek semi finals leading into the grand final on the following Sunday, the 30th of August. Hence the reason why we've moved our. Um... Um, Hophead's quiz from next Sunday to next Monday so we can all sit down and watch uh, Western United against uh, Melbourne City in the final. Yeah, we'll go into contact the A-League and see if we can get them to reschedule their finals for our for our quiz night. But unfortunately, um, well, they didn't quite come to the party, so we're going to go with a Monday night quiz. And I think Monday night is a good night for a bit of trivia. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Brent and Ray, you've beaten us to it, mate. We were going to talk about the uh, the EPL, but I don't think we'll bother now. Um, there's no point now. No, uh, Brenton's put it all up on the screen. But only joking, Brenton. Great to have you on board, mate. And I know you're a whiz when it comes to what's going on in the EPL. So uh, the EPL fixtures were announced overnight. And I suppose the standout game in that lot, Steve, is, uh, is uh, Liverpool Leeds on Saturday, the 12th of September. What, a, what an opening day fixture that is. Yeah, what a fixture. I'm just having visions and flashbacks to the V-Bomber scoring four against Liverpool in that famous game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bielsa in the uh, Premier League. I'm, I'm excited to see that. So it's coming around uh, so fast, isn't it? The 12th of September, those fixtures there. So that's hot off the press there. So, yes, you can keep an eye out on who your team has. That's Palace, Southampton, and Fulham, Arsenal, Liverpool, Leeds, Spurs, Everton, West Brom, Leicester. West Ham and Newcastle, all those games kicking off simultaneously, 3 p.m. local kickoff times on the uh, the Saturday. So that would be uh, midnight our time. And then on the uh, Saturday night our time at midnight. And then uh, what have we got? A streak of uh, Monday games, uh, Brighton and Chelsea, Sheffield United and Wolves, or just the two, um, both played at the same time as well, Monday at 8 p.m. So they will be in the, uh, what, the early hours of Tuesday morning our time. Yeah, look, it's good to see uh, football being played back at its usual home, which is three o'clock. It's always been three o'clock in the UK, um, but due to uh, t- television rights um, and, and Sky, um, as it is in the UK, have a uh, have a massive say on when fixtures are, are going to get played, um, hence the amount of money that's, uh, that's being banded around in the EPL. But uh, it's good to see that fixtures are back at three o'clock. And um, how do you think Leeds will, um, will fare this year? Steve, what's your, what's your thoughts? Uh, look, I'm just waiting to see how they can bolster their squad to deal with the uh, promotion to the EPL level. Um, I think they have the ability to finish mid-table, but it's it's early days yet, I think. what Do you have any early thoughts? Yeah, look, I, I actually I think they're a good football inside. They will have to... I think they'll probably invest in probably three or four players. I think one of the the key ones that they want to try and get is the uh, I can't think of the lad's name at the back, uh, White, um, who's uh, on loan from Brighton last season. Uh, mm. I know they're trying very hard to keep it or to get him at the club. Uh, he's a good player. He was actually on loan a couple of seasons ago at my local club back home, Newport County, uh, in uh, in League uh, mm-hmm. in, in League Three. So it shows you how how things can change. You go out on loan to a, um, a a League Three side and then. You know, following season, you're playing in the EPL. Very funny how how football works. But um, um, yeah, look, it's going to be another strong, strong league. I think Arsenal will um, have obviously invested this this week again. They've uh, they've taken uh, Willian from Chelsea, which is a uh, probably the worst kept secret in in football in terms mm-hmm. of uh, transfers. But that's a good signing by uh, Arteta, and I think he'll. He'll certainly be a, um, a, a or Arsenal will be a, a different kettle of fish this year. Um, Liverpool will be strong again. Uh, they've signed a couple of players, and of course, then you've got uh, the usuals. Then your Chelsea, Manchester United, Everton will finish their normal seventh, um, and then it'll be interesting to see what Spurs and um, and and the rest of uh, the rest do. So, yeah, looking forward to that. All starts on Saturday, the twelfth of September. Yeah, and uh, just make a note, Burnley versus Manchester United and Manchester City versus Aston Villa. Those games have been postponed to a later date. And our man Brenton Ray says these TV games have not been announced, so these games are subject to change at the moment, likely to be announced in the coming week. Thank you very much, Rayman, 
keeping us abreast of all that is going on. So I really appreciate that, actually. Yeah, so good job, Brendan. Good yeah. Um, yeah, gentlemen, anything else happening news-wise or, or that's the lot, is it? We've got the Europa League final coming up on Saturday morning, Sevilla and Inter Milan, 5 a.m. Um, Inter Milan with a 5-0 win over Shakhtar Donetsk on uh, Tuesday morning. So that was a bit of a one-sided one where Sevilla edged out Man United one goal to nil. This looks like an interesting final as well and worth setting the alarm for 5 a.m. Saturday morning. Yeah, the perennial uh, Euro Europa Cup finalist Seville against um, Inform um, Milan, or Inter Milan rather. Um, you know, what a job Conti's done at that club as well since he's been there. You know, he's taken a player that wasn't wanted at Manchester United. Um, he's turned him into a worldie again, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, um, Jess. Well, good. That's it, isn't it? That's 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 it for the news. Anything else? Oh, a bit of transfer news this morning with uh, Trent oh. Sainsbury getting a move to Belgium. Yeah. Um, and also being involved in a skydiving short film as part of the uh, transfer <laughs> to, promote, <laughs> to promote the news at the club. So that's exciting. Now, the speculation continues about Tommy Rogic going to Qatar, which is obviously going to earn a lot of criticism if that happens. But there is some talk coming from a lot of money. There could be another offer on the table that could see him moving to England. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah, he's going on a holiday to England, though, is he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's, a, there's a rumored swap deal with uh, Brighton and Hove Albion, which would see him link up with uh, Aaron Moy and Matt Ryan. So they could become like Leeds were about 20 years ago with all the Aussies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all, right. all right. Sorry, Craig, you to say something? No, let's crack on. Let's move on and uh, let's get ready for the uh, for the for the battle of uh, of the West. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. You can now get takeaway Friday and Saturday nights between 5pm to 7.30pm. Phone your order through on 7021055 Friday and Saturday nights between those times, or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au. But orders must be received by 5pm on the day required. With Father's Day coming up, why not treat Dad this Father's Day to a Georgie's on Vista lunch? Choose from our Father's Day menu, our combo packs or our specials. All are listed on our website, georgiesonvista.com.au. Meals are to be ordered by 5pm Saturday, September 5, with pick-up between 11.30am to 2.30pm on Father's Day. No orders will be taken on the day. Email your orders to info at georgesonvista.com.au and please include your name and phone number. Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from George's on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise, in the heart of Caroline Springs. Welcome back to the uh, Football Outwear Show. It's uh, all is in readiness for, for our big, big clash tonight. The Clash of the Titans, it's been dubbed the Princess Highway Derby between Hoppers Crossing and North Geelong Warriors. Gentlemen, take it away. All right. So tonight representing our two clubs involved from Hoppers Crossing, it's Dane Garbett and from North Geelong Warriors, Anthony Banavarts. Have we got the guys on the line? <laughs> Yeah, that's the only, there you go. We're going to get tonight, you two. <laughs> Dane, can you hear us? Can, yes. There you go. Anthony, can you hear us? All clear. Perfect. Okay. okay. So we're off to a good start. We don't have buzzers, but can you test your buzzers? We ask you to do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All right, guys. So, All right. Um, so how it's going to work tonight for you, we'll start off with a, a, a team toss to find out which set of questions uh, you guys want. Uh, ten questions, multiple choice. First answer is your last answer. Uh, what will happen is the questions will come on screen. You'll disappear. The questions will come on screen for ten seconds. You've got ten seconds to answer the question, and then we'll bring you back on to give us your your final answer. All right. So uh, no googling. Don't listen to any of the boys at North Geelong, and don't listen to Kev Smart or anybody at the club. Joel Gribbons in the corner hiding, is he? No, you've gone, mate. Switch up. Turn it on. No. No. Okay. We've... 
Looks like we've lost, lost Dane for the moment. We'll just see if we can get his audio working again. Is that a forfeit? <laughs> well, we, we said it's, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a minus one uh, start if you <laughs> can't speak. <laughs> okay, we'll see if we can get that organized. So um, how's the confidence in the camp been for you, Anthony? Have the boys from the club been giving you much stick or... Bigging you up for this one? Yeah, I'll tell you what, the group chat was on fire. Um, I think I think Morgan's ready to rip into me with the first question yeah, to get yeah. wrong. Um, so, yeah, aiming for a perfect score to give him nothing to work with. Yeah, perfect. Bing, are you back with us? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, mate. Perfect. Yeah, we can. We can. Perfect. That's okay. We want. <laughs> so is Joel, in the, is Joel in, the, uh, in the garage with you there? No, he's not. No. I was saying I live with Daniel Sweeney, but he's not here. Oh, so You live with Daniel Sweeney. Um, well, that's going to be a bunch as much as for the top of the teapot, isn't it? He's hopeless. Yeah, he would be no good. That's why they put me up. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Well, listen. Like I said, there'll be uh, ten questions. Uh, at, if at the end of the uh, of the uh, of the rounds uh, t scores tied, there will be a tiebreaker that Steve's uh, kindly put together. And uh, a big thank you to Steve this week for putting the questions together. So, great job, Steve. You're welcome. All right. Start with a toss of a coin. Which one of you, lovely gentlemen, wants to? Do you have a coin there, Steve? I do. I do. So no. I believe, uh, Anthony, you're the uh, you're the away team tonight. You got the uh, got the white shorts on to do a footy pile <laughs> in there. Um, we go heads or tails. Go heads. And heads it is there. So you can choose. Do you want to shoot first or go second? I'll follow. I'll go second. Okay. So okay. you're okay. so Dane will go up to the spot first for question uh, question one when we're ready to to kick off. Okay. All right, you just get myself sorted here. I need so. like a little musical jingle to play before we kick off, I think, almost. So we, yeah, we, right, we got question one on there. That up and thought that out. So yeah. question <laughs> one for Dane. Who finished on the top of the scoring charts in NPL Victoria in 2019, being credited with 22 goals for the season? Was it A, Alex Salmon, B, Liam Boland, C, James Brown, D, Brandon Barnes, and no Googling in the background. Like any of those computers go in? I don't know if it would be on Google. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'll go B, Liam Boland. No idea. Is that your final answer? Um, I don't know if it will. It sounds like you're not. You're uncertain. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. A, Alex can, Salmon. Alex Salmon, yep. Yeah. Mm. Final answer? Yeah. Okay. You should have stayed with B. It was Liam. Ah, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So over to, uh, over to North Geelong. There, <laughs> there, hard luck there, Dane. Hey, Jeez. Dane. Don't listen to me, mate. They make your own. Psych out from the quit post. <laughs> make your own. All right. Uh, Mr. Panovac, your first question. Who finished top of the MPLW victory in 2013? 2019, also winning the grand final and Nike FA Cup in a stellar season for the club. Was it FC Berlin? Was it B, South Melbourne? C, Calder United? Or D, Almain? Uh, I'm going to go with C, Calder United. Final answer? Yeah. That was correct. That was Calder United. 1-1. 1-0 one, one. Uh, one to uh, North Geelong. Dane, back in. Yep. Question two for yourself. Just wait for Tonchi to uh, to bring that up. Oh. <laughs> Socceroo winger Brendan ba Brandon Barello currently plays for which German club after previously playing at Brisbane Raw and FC Kaiserslautern? Is it A, Armenia Beifeld, B, Borussia Mönchengladbach, C, Hoffenheim, or D, Freiburg? No idea. Uh, I'll go C, Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim is your answer. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not. It's uh, D, Freiburg. Borello joined Freiburg on the 23rd of July, 2018. He has three senior caps for Australian nation at present. Sorry, God. What's going on there? Yeah. So, uh, so that was, playing uh, instruments. He is. So that's the wrong answer there, and the wrong answer on. So you're uh, you're two, f none for two. Perfect. Yeah, good start there, mate. Well done. <laughs> uh, there's a five point question coming up to make up. Five point question. Yeah, <laughs> number two for 
North Geelong. After 403 long professional career, former Socceroo Luke Wiltshire finished his playing days at which NPL New South Wales club? Was it A, Rockdale City, B, Wollongong Wolves, C, Marconi Stallions, or D, Manly United? Um, I'm not sure which club he finished his career, but I know that he's coaching Wollongong Wolves at the moment. So I'll go with, I'll go with B, Wollongong. Final answer? Yeah. Wollongong Wolves is the correct answer. Good answer, mate. He joined Wollongong on 2018 season from Sydney FC. He went on to take on the head coach's role at the club on his announcement of his retirement. So, good answer. Two for two for North Geelong Warriors. We go into question number three, Dane. Come on, mate. You need to get back into this. I know. Maybe we need to give Sweeney a quick call. We'll have to get Brenton Ray on the phone. Brenton, he would get every one of these questions, Brenton Ray would. He would. I've been on the phone already. Question three. In 2016, MPL Victoria Club Green Gully became the second lower tier club to defeat an A-League opponent in the FA Cup. Who did they beat? Was it A, Central Coast Mariners? Was it B, West Sydney Wanderers? Was it C, Newcastle Jets? Or was it D, Adelaide United? I remember this, but I can't remember what club it was. Um, I'll go D, Adelaide. Final answer? Yeah. Adelaide United is wrong. <sighs> it was Central Coast Mariners. They beat the Mariners 2-1 at Gully, Green Gully Reserve in the round of 32. And on the 2nd of August 2015, they joined Adelaide City in achieving this feat, who themselves beat Western Sydney Wanderers 1-zip in 2014. So three out of three wrong for uh, for Dane. Um, we're going the other way for, for Anthony to see whether he can get three out of three and a and a big lead. So question number three for North Geelong Warriors, and then we'll have a bit of a break. In his playing days, former Socceroo coach Frank Farina piled his trade in Belgium from 1988 to 1991. Which club did he represent? Was it A Standard Lie? Was it B, Club Bruges? Was it C, Anderlecht? Or was it D, Genkt? Uh, I've got no idea on this one. Um, so I'm just going to take a wild guess and go with B, Club Bruges. Is that your final answer? Yeah, I'll stick with it. Club Bruges is correct for one <laughs> point. Farina played for Club Blue 75 times, scoring 43 goals, also winning the Belgian League in 89. season. Great answer. So at the uh, at the midway mark in the first half, we've got uh, Hoppers crossing. Zip. North Long Warriors, three. And has, has Dane gone? Has he decided to call it a day and he's stuck it? <laughs> There's still seven <laughs> questions to go, Dane. Where is he? All right, well, hope. All right, hopefully we can get Dane back on the line for his upcoming questions. Uh, so at this point, take a bit of a break. Um, Anthony, can I ask you a little bit about your time at North Geelong? Have you got a particular favourite moment that comes to mind when you think about your time there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, it was a few years ago now, um, but it still feels like it was only just yesterday. But it was definitely the the playoff match against Dandenong Thunder that we had the um, it was the MPL2 playoff game. And uh, I think we were the heavy underdogs coming into that game, which made it all the better. Um, they had the fire pair of a couple of ex Socceroos in their team as well. And they were definitely the big, big spending team of that competition. Um, and we absolutely mopped the floor with them, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and it was a rainy night. And, you know, the Warriors fans were there in big numbers, as they always are. Um, and just the scenes at full time was, was absolute chaos, you know, singing together with the fans and in the terraces. It was, it was really something to be remembered. That's pretty decent. Um, even better than the uh, the big derby at Elko Park uh, early last season. Well, the derby was fantastic because um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of passion going into that game. Um, but yeah, I think just for the the momentous occasion that it was being a, an MPL2 playoff match and ultimately led us to, to promotion after we beat Richmond in the in the promotion relegation playoff. Um, yeah, I've got to go with that one. Very good. Good answer. Um, 
Now, Dane, uh, tell us a little bit about your time and experience at Hopper's Crossing and if you've got a particular memorable moment that stands out above all else. Um, yeah, I've been there six years and I wouldn't say that there's a particular moment. I think um, uh, there, there was a few years there, two or three years, where we were winning quite comfortably um, and we managed to go from State 5 or whatever it was up to like State 2 and then State 1. So there was a good few years there where mm. we were yeah, winning, getting pissed after games on Saturdays at the club. But yeah, it was it was wicked. Um, so yeah, it was a good, good few years and a lot of the boys are still there now. So yeah, there's probably no no key moments to stand out, but there was a good couple of years there. It, yeah, it was really enjoyable. Yeah, definitely hoppers have certainly rode some good momentum over previous seasons in recent years. Um, and have you had any post-match interviews with Brenton Ray himself? I have, I have. Um, they're a big part. He's Mr. Media down at Hoppers Crossing. So, um, yeah, I'm sure you've all seen them. And anyone here that's uh, watching this is probably tuning into those weekly. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to be on one. Um, but, yeah, yeah, they, they're awesome. Yeah, he's Very good. good value, isn't he? Very good. Brian Taylor's got nothing on Brent and Ray, that's for sure. And he's uh, also a good volunteer around the club, I know, at, uh, at Hoppers. So, um, yeah. shout out to Brenton. He's a big fan of the show as well. So, thanks for your support, mate. Now... Craig, are we ready to move on to the fourth question each? We are. Just before we go, I've got uh, Daniel Sweeney's uh, just uh, commented in um, Banner, and he said, Anthony Banner, can you give us a wave? For He's Banner. not on camera. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Just for you, Sweeney. There you go, Sweeney. Just for you. There you go. Just for it's you. It's not about you, Sweeney. Yes, <laughs> apparently it is. Yeah. It is, yes. All right, question number four. So who we got up first? We got Hoppers uh, and Dean coming up first with question number four. Uh, then we'll have a bit of a break after this guy, some uh, some uh, uh, um, adverts, and then we'll be back for the second half of the quiz. So question number four. In part, sorry, in part to honour the number of official languages of South Africa, how many colours were featured on the official ball of the 2010 World Cup the mm. army was it A3 B5 C8 or D11 mm. I want to go I'll go D11 the highest is that your final answer <laughs> you make me down myself every time you say that. Um, yeah. Let's go C eight. You definitely want to. You're definitely going to go for C, yeah. <laughs> I need to go D D seven, uh, D eleven, D eleven. Stick with D. Stick final with D. answer. Yeah, final answer. Eleven is the correct answer. Oh, well yes. done, Dane. Well yes. yes. You avoided the psych out. I almost didn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's also the number of players on a full side. 11 was everywhere in 2010. In 2010. The tournament even began on the 11th of June and ended on the 11th of July. And it was uh, and was the 11th design of a World Cup football. Great that from you, Steve. Great question, mate. Well done. That's a pretty hard question too, so well yeah. done on Dane for getting it right. Getting your point, exactly. Question yeah. four for... It's on the board now. He is on the board, only three behind. Banner's, uh, I've seen Banner slip a few times, so um, <laughs> I'm sure he's got his uh, his medals on today. Number four question for you, mate. Because hostilities escalated after a World Cup qualifier match, the brief 1969 conflict between what neighbouring countries became known as the Football War? Was it Ivory Coast and Ghana, El Salvador and Honduras, C, Portugal and Spain, or D, Uruguay and Argentina? It's another question I have absolutely no idea about, so I'm going to have to go with a with guess. Um, I haven't heard of it, so I'm going to go with something uh, probably lesser known countries. So I'll go with the Central American pair being B, El Salvador and Honduras. Final answer? Yeah, might as well. Lock it in. Eddie, he's gone for B, and he's absolutely spot on again. He's nailed it. He's nailed it. El Salvador, Honduras. More process than... of elimination there. I like the, the technique. Yeah, more than 2,000 people were killed in the conflict, which lasted four days and resulted in the displacement of more than 300,000 Salvadorians. There you go, the football war. Absolutely. 
Final uh, final uh, question in this part of the quiz is a uh, picture quiz um, for both of you. First up is for Dane. Uh, which Italian club has this as its logo? Is it Genoa, Napoli, Lazio, or Sampdoria? Um, I feel like I would recognize Napoli or Lazio, but I don't want to say that and be completely wrong. Um, I'm going to go with D, Sampdoria. I'm not even going to ask you this time if this is a final. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm locking it, locking it in. You're locking it in. Yeah. in. Absolutely spot on, mate. Sampdoria is the badge. And uh, here it is there in its uh, glory. The club uh, features a sailor known by the old Gianotti, a name of Bas Bas Bacicia, which translates to John Baptist English. The image of a sailor is appropriate due to Sampdoria being based in the port city of Genoa. Well done, Steve. Liking your uh, liking your homework, mate. You're welcome, mate. And uh, liking Dane's work, he's uh, he's found a gear. He's got the last two out of two. He's catching up, and it's uh, four two. So to make it a, a full full five out of five for Norch along in the first half of the quiz, um, we've got the same for for Anthony. So a pick the quiz. Can you tell me which English club has this as its logo? It's a Norwich. B, Forest Green Rovers, C, Port Vale, or Tonchi's favourite team, West Bromwich Albion? Uh, I can tell you that they weren't very good this season, um, and it's A, Norwich. Very good. It's five out of five for Banovac in the first half. The current badge consists of a canary resting on a football with a stylist version of the City of Norwich arms in the left-hand corner. Congratulations. So there's uh, the end of the first half and the scores after five questions are Hoppers Crossing 2, a very gallant 2, um, and uh, Norch along with a full out of uh, 5 out of 5. But it's still time, Dean. still time to uh, to get your energy kinks down, your mate, and we're, we're back for uh, for round two in the, in the second half. So bear with us, guys, and we'll be back to you just after the short break. The best beer store in the West, with two stores at Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Alterna. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. Welcome back to Football Out West. It's um, half time here in the big derby. Um, it's, um, as we can see, the scores up there. Uh, Hoppers crossing. <laughs> Woo! Ho Ho Hoppers crossing uh, two, trailing North Geelong five. Uh, gentlemen, it's, um, it's, it's an enthralling competition so far. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave it all to you guys. Doing a great job behind the scenes there, Tonch. Yeah, keep up the good work, mate. And uh, yeah, good to see that ad from our sponsors there, Hopheads in uh, Point Cook and Altona, where you can order the Survival Sixes. It's uh, $60 with free delivery and beers, including the Sticky Date Stout, the Idaho Secret Juicy IPA, the Hazy Days, and the Evergreen King. Uh, look up their uh, Facebook or uh, their website to uh, place your place your order. Now, Craig, do you think they should have a Football Out West dedicated beer? And if so, would that be would that be a Football Out West sour, a bitter, um, a pale ale, a lager? Maybe people in the comments can say what they think. But I don't know. There's a business idea that could go gangbusters, the Football yeah. Out West. Just on that first one, what was the first beer? Sticky what? Sticky date stout. Sticky date. Right. Okay. Yeah, I haven't tried that one yet, but, no. you know, it could be a sensation, especially well, in wintertime. Uh, if uh, if Dean pulls his uh, socks up in the second half, there could be a fifty dollar voucher for uh, for Hopheads coming to uh, coming to his way if he can uh, if he can pull some of these scores back. Is there any questions you want to ask the guys through this break, Steve? Um, okay, yeah, well, no worries. Um, Dane, um, obviously, uh, it's a it's a effectively a year off now, I suppose. But is there anything happening around the club um, that you wanted to mention? Um, I know there's been some floodlight works and stuff going on up at the Grange this year. Right, we've lost oh, Dane's audio. Oh, he's back. Sorry, carry on, mate. 
Yeah, yeah. To be honest, no idea. I think, yeah, there is some flood. We were meant to be getting lights this year, which would have meant we could have had some night games, which is disappointing. We're not able to do that. But um, And they've just fixed up our middle ground. So we've now got three fairly decent grounds. So that's kind of it from around the club. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep, that's it. And the uh, synthetic pitch is still going good there. And you've still got the gymnasium in the club as well, I take it? If anyone from the council is listening to this, that synthetic needs resurfacing. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but, yeah, it's still it's still there. What's going on? There's it run out of rubber <laughs> over the last – how yeah, long have you been there now? Like yeah. maybe 10 years nearly? 10 years, yeah, 10 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, due for a renewal. Um, yeah. Yeah, and who does the best work in the gym there at Hoppers, would you say? I'd be up there. Definitely. I'll be out there. Yeah. Um, Daniel Sweeney's couldn't be further away from the gym if he tried. Um, yeah. So he's definitely he's at the other end of the scale. Um, yeah. He's, he's, probably, got pod, he's got a body as if he's, he's been in the gym. Uh, you should say it now, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Very good. Very good. Peter Cody's just asked in the uh, in the questions is, what's the highest division hoppers have played in? Would you happen to know that thing? Uh, state one. I think it was state two years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. State one um, yeah. is the ho- the highest set that I, I know of. I think it I think it is state one. Well, yeah. The leagues have changed since over the years. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe equivalent highest, but yeah, in the current league structure, state one. Yeah, good. Mm. Uh, Anthony, how's things going behind the scenes at, at North? Have you been privy to any hot gossip from either the um, the committee, the the works on the facility, or the playing group? Yeah, it's been a little bit happening. Um, so in terms of the facility, they've completely returned pitch two, um, which I know a lot of people will be happy about because it was a little bit of a cow's paddock. Um, so there's that happening. Um, I know we're all really keen to to get both pitches fixed up for this season, which unfortunately won't happen. Um, but yeah, definitely looking good for, for next year and beyond. Very good. Looking forward to seeing the tournament there uh, next, uh, what is it, next October as well. Absolutely. I'm kind of preparing my liver for it, but um, yeah, we'll see how I go. <laughs> That's a good question. How do you um, consume so much uh, rakia and other substances and also play good football? I think you just have a couple in the morning as well before your game and it gets you through. Very good. Maybe at halftime even as well. Um, well, I don't know if anyone's consumed any rack here at halftime in this quiz, but it's time to go for question six when we're, when we're ready. And we've got some questions with uh, five points on offer, particularly with the Who Am I? So there is opportunities there for, for Dane to catch up for the for the Reds at Hopper's Crossing still. All right. We'll go with question number six when you're ready. So this is a five-point question, uh, Dane. Mm-hmm. Um I began my senior career for Montpellier, which is in France, in 1983. Any ideas? Oh, do I say next? If yeah, I yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Can no, have no a, you can have a stab. Yeah, you, can, yeah. if you, need, you can have one question, uh, one one slab on each uh, on each question. Oh, and and not don't get knocked out. All right. No, um, no. I have no idea, but. I'm trying to think of who who would have finished their career in like the early 2000s, or even late earlier. Um, no idea. No idea. No. Nah. All right. Next question. I debuted for my country in Debut. 1980. You debuted. They debuted. <laughs> <laughs> for my country in 1989, in what would become an international career where I would do 97 caps while scoring 16 times. Uh, I debuted for my country in 1989 in what would become an international career where I would do 97 caps while scoring 16 times. No? No idea. No idea? Not yet, no. All right. Well, a few points, uh, Tronch. I scored the first ever golden goal in a World Cup. Jesus Christ. I'm not. Um, I give you an idea. He's French. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting, that, I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> I can't even think of anyone. Um, who would finish in the early 2000s? No, no idea. Is the, is the next one actually giving me who it is? Going to give you four answers. <laughs> As a defender, my 20-year-old okay. career saw me represent European heavyweights Barcelona, Inter Milan, 
and Manchester United. Blanc. Lauren Blanc. Lauren Blanc is correct for one point. We got this. Well, <laughs> we got there. We got there. Yes, he was. Uh, he was some player, wasn't he? In his uh, in his heyday, uh, fantastic. Even when he was coming at the end of his career at Manchester United, he was uh, superb. So, uh, one point uh, that takes you to three. Um, we'll wait now for for Tonchi to move over to uh, to North Geelong's questions, and the same for you, um, Ban. Um, five questions. If you get it in the first one, you get your five points. You can have a one guess per question. I was born in Pau Grande, Brazil, in 1933. And you, can, you said I can have one question. You have one, um, you have one guess on each question. It's too old to be Pele, is it? I'll go with Pele oh. for the first guess. Pele, okay. We go to question number two. I played the bulk of my career at Botafogo appearing in 238 games and scoring 84 times. Um, I honestly don't know any Brazilian players that are that old. Um, nah, i got to go next. Next, next question. For two points, I represented Brazil at three World Cups, 1958. 62 and 66, helping my country win two of them. I was joint golden boot winner and player of the tournament in 1962. Uh, um, no? No, no I'll, I'll, I'll give me the options. No, I don't know. All right, we'll go on to the four options then. A winger, I was regarded as one of the greatest dribblers of all time, scoring 12 goals in my 50 games for Brazil. Was it A, Zagallo, B, Zito, C, Garincha, or D, Pele? I've already guessed Pele, so I'm going to go with the only other one that I know, which is Garincha, C. You do? So you're not going to stick with Pele, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me C. Definitely. Final answer? Final answer. Garincha is right. He was known as the brilliant little bird, only suffered defeat with Brazil in his very final match for the national team, losing 3-1 three, three, to Hungary at Goodison Park. He sadly died in 1983 at just 49 years of age and as a stadium named in his honour in the capital, Brasilia. So another correct answer. Six out of six for, uh, for North Geelong. Um, and just a comment here from uh, from Scott Dixon, who's put Anthony Banovac, absolute brains, the boy. Dane Garbert, come on, lad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and and of course, Scott Dixon's uh, Scott Dixon's playing at Hoppers uh, now, Dane, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Does he train? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. Does he? He trains. Um, he does uh, work outside of training too. I've seen videos of him doing parkour. Um, in the city, uh, yeah. doing boot camps um, and running laps at the Morning. tan. So yeah, he puts his hard yards in. Yeah, absolutely. He's just got to be careful when he's uh, when he's uh, out on the field that he doesn't get hit by uh, any uh, magpies uh, or UV rays. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Equally damaging. Yeah, yeah, for him. <laughs> okay, question number seven scores a six three. Still time to to get back into this. Okay, so question number. Seven for uh, for Dane. Germans Germany's Oliver Bierhoff played for which Italian club between 1988 and 2001, scoring 36 goals in 91 appearances? Was it A. Ascoli, B. Udinese, C. AC Milan, D. Shevo Verona? Verona, sorry. I need to get this right. You to definitely. Stay in it. Um. Let's go with B. No, I, am, B. I am going to ask you if it's your final answer. It is. It is. Definitely your final answer, yeah? Yep. Definitely, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Definitely, okay. Oh. You, you're, let's go C. C, A, C, Milan. I'll go with the most popular team. No, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to sway you in any way, Dane. So you've got, <laughs> you've got to tell me what you think the answer is. All right, I'm going to lock in C, A, C, Milan. You're going to lock in C. 
Ace yep. Milan is the correct answer. <laughs> Unbelievable. Tom, what's going on, mate? Number seven for Anthony. He's uh, pulled one back, and you need to you need to uh, to make sure you get this one. Spain defeated Italy four 0 in the final of Euro twenty twelve in Kiev. Who was their manager? Was it A. Louis Aragones, B. Vincente Del Bosque, C. Luis Enrique, or D. Julian Lopetegui? Uh, I'm going to go with B. Vincente Del Bosque. Final answer. Uh, Yes, yes. Yes? Okay, your correct answer is B, Vincent A. Del Bosque. He took over from Louis Aragonic in 2008, managing the national team in 2016 with a 76-win ratio and also winning the 2010 World Cup. Another correct answer. Seven out of seven. Seven, yeah. seven out of seven. Over to you, Steve. All right, so we'll just take a little bit of a, a little bit of a break now. No, we're going to go on to question. We're going to go on to question eight now for for team A, which is for for Dane. For Dane, oh, teacher okay. question. Name this World Cup player. A. Matudi. B. Danny Welbeck. C. Dembele. Or D. Musa. I think it's Danny Welbeck, B. Let's look in that. Go on, you've got plenty of time. Can you hear me? I can, yeah, yeah. You'll have a think about yeah. it. Make sure you you get the answer right. <laughs> it's either Welbeck or Dembele, um, I think. Um, let's go uh, I've, if, uh, Let's go with C. I've swapped it. I'll swap the last one. Let's swap this one. Let's go with C, Dembele. You're going to go with Dembele. He's the yeah. correct answer. <laughs> well, 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 Dembele has 21 international appearances and two goals for France already at the age of 23. 7 5. That's a high scorer today. I thought these questions were going to be hard. Yeah. It's <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Thanks for backing that up, Dane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So back on to you. Uh, no, who have we got next? We've got, uh, sorry, we've got. Uh, so we're uh, on to no, Anthony no, for no, his his uh, guest, the player. Name the World Cup player. Is it A, Ashley Young? B, Trent Alexander Arnold? Where's he gone? C, Jesse Lingard? Or D, Ruben Loftus Cheek? Um, oh, well, I <laughs> haven't given me a lot to go off with. How did they um, take that photo, I wonder, as well? Yeah, look. I'm just waiting for some of the comments. in there? <laughs> Poor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if I can say this, but it looks like the by the skin complexion, I don't think it's Ashley Young. Um, Morgan's just wrote, that's Banner at Elko Park. <laughs> he <laughs> control one of his glasses, I reckon. It's not. <laughs> it's not because look at that pitch. <laughs> I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Loftus Cheek. Give me give me Ruben Loftus Cheek. Even though he's probably not played that many games for, for England, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with. So I'll say. it's a World Cup player: Ashley Young, Trent Alexander Arnold, Jesse Lingard, or Ruben Loftus Cheek. Actually, can I change my answer? You can do what you want. I don't reckon Loftus Cheek went to the World Cup. Um, I'll go with um, Jesse Lingard. C. Final answer? Yeah. Oh, no. Should have stuck with what you got, mate. The 24-year-old <laughs> Chelsea midfielder Loftus-Cheek has made 10 appearances for England national team. The answer was Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I threw a rare uh, will cut. hurts. You there, mate, just to uh, <laughs> confuse you a little bit. Question number nine. For, did you want to ask, uh, stop there, Stephen, have uh, a couple of minutes? Um, yeah, any other uh, updates for leading into next season, perhaps now for Hoppers, uh, Dane? Any changes on the on-field, off-field personnel that you're aware of? Any any big coups, any big signings or anything happening? Um, no, we were pretty settled as a, as a group before we, the um, the season was cancelled. And, yeah, we'd managed to recruit quite, quite a good side. I thought we were looking pretty good for the upcoming season. We lost um, our captain this year, which is probably a good thing. 
um, I hope he's listening. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were looking quite quite good. So hopefully next year we keep the same group of group of boys. Um, yeah, yeah, that's probably that's probably it. Now you did yeah. mention on uh, on social media this week. I did see something uh, posted by the Hoppers Club um, about tonight's show, mm-hmm. um, and I did see a little comment about a um, possible announcement. Um, I hope it's I hope it's me being captain next year. That's that uh, everyone's calling for that. I think. Yeah. What's that? Is that the announcement was it? Do you put? It could be. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does the club know? No, not yet. Oh, well, they do. <laughs> playing groups, yeah. The playing groups voting. Yeah, yeah. They've asked me to announce it. Yeah, very good. <laughs> He's auditioning tonight. Um, Anthony, any uh, <laughs> any squad news for you? New new coach this year. Uh, I know the club was looking out for a new striker. Is there any any goss going on there from the the uh, new coaching staff or the playing staff this year? Can I just ask Craig a question first? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I want to know who's picked that um, the picture of Morgan in the background there because he's picked the derby loss from last season and it was probably our most painful loss of the season and Morgan's decided to frame it and put it on the wall in the house and I'm, yeah, I just I want to know what's going on with that. Yeah. A- now, I guess, Anthony, does that constitute a fine for Morgan or for Craig or how does that how would that work? The fact that it's up there, mate. Record it's- fine for both of them. Yeah. I think he's just about to two-foot him, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> so he's, about, he's about 30 metres off the air at the moment because you know he doesn't know to stay on his feet anyway. So, um, yeah, that was a painful night down. I think actually me and you commented and commentated on that, Steve, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so we were on the scaffold and we also had like a uh, touchline reporter or an old-fashioned boundary rider for AFL speak as well who was now pressing buttons at the moment here in the background. Um, well, it sounds good, Anthony. It looks like you've raised some money for your end-of-season trip for 2021. <laughs> so good good news there. Even uh, even uh, maybe more to come to with a Hopheads voucher. But we'll see. We'll move into our uh, final couple of questions each now. It will be question nine coming up on your screen in uh in just in just a few moments okay final two questions guys okay dane which state league club play their matches at scoville reserve or scoville reserve is it a maidstone b balmoral c kilo Wolves, or d gisborne gisborne hmm I, I live in West Footscray, so I feel like I would know the name if it was Scoville Reserve. Um, let's go with Balmoral. Balmoral, who are a Western Suburbs team just up the road from, from Hoppers. Um, is that your final answer? Yep, let's go that. Balmoral FC. And where do you live? West Footscray. So, which is the club closest to you from there? Maidstone, probably. Maidstone United is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I probably run past it all the time. Yeah, so maybe you need to get out to the floor, mate, and have a look around you. <laughs> might be more than 5Ks from your house there at the moment, Dan. Yeah, yeah, oh. I don't think it is. <laughs> 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 which is disappointing. Question number nine for, uh, for Anthony, who's got uh, 90, 90%. Uh, success rate at the moment. Who took out the Football Victoria's 2020 Men's Community Shield? Was it A, Hume City, B, Avondale, C, Heidelberg United, or D, Bentley Greens? Um, oh, I'm trying to think through this logically. I don't think Hume City qualified. For, oh, did they win the cup? Um... I'm, not, I'm going to go not Avondale because I know they've they've choked a fair bit over the last couple of seasons. Um, that'll hurt if that's the right answer, won't it? Yeah, that's um, good. I'll go with um, Bentley, who won the title last year, I think. So they obviously would have played in it. Yeah, I'll go with um, I'll go with Bentley. Bentley Green's your final answer. Yeah. Okay, so you said that Avondale would hurt if you got it wrong. Correct? <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. So you're absolutely spot on, mate. It is Bentley Greens. They defeated uh, Hume City 7-6 on penalties at, at City Vista Reserve. Um, the nominated charity of the event was the Bushfire Relief Fund. So uh, another correct answer there for, uh, for North Geelong. And that takes you to 
eight out of nine correct, and we go into the final round. The picture quiz to finish off. Dane, in November 2019, Al Hilal of Saudi Arabia won the third AFC Champions League 3 0 on aggregate over which opponent? The Rua Red Diamonds, Pohang Steelers, Kashima Antlers, or Jumbach Motors? Um, I don't think it's A. Um, let's go C, Kashima Antlers. Okay, and why have you gone for Kashima Antlers? I don't know. It's a, it's literally a guess. <laughs> Why didn't you? Why didn't you go for A? I didn't think it was them, but it sounds like it is. By the way, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. <asking. laughs> Let's let lock in C. Lock in C. Yeah, lock in C. Cash yeah. Was, yeah. Only open win from here, anyway. Yeah, you can't. But it would have been nice to finish on a on a on a win. And if you'd said A, you would have been spot on. The answer mm. is big red diamonds. Yep. You finish on a five out of ten, and we'll have to go to the last question here for for uh, North Geelong. Um, it was a good streak there from Dane. He did get five consecutive correct answers in the middle there, so there was a, a good middle. Just the uh, start and end were not quite as good. <laughs> yep. Very good. Last question. In Spanish La Liga history, which player's arrival to the league has commanded the most expensive transfer fee? Is it A, Cristiano Ronaldo, B, Gareth Bale, C, Philip Coutinho, or D, Antoine Griezmann? Um, it's either C or D. Um, I'm going to go with Coutinho, but... I know that one of them was a lower base and one had higher bonuses. Because I know Griezmann's was a... They triggered his release clause and that was about 110. And then Coutinho's was more than that. So I'll go, I'll go see Coutinho. Final answer? Uh, I think so. I think so. Okay. The answer is Philip Coutinho. He transferred from Liverpool to Barcelona for a record 160 million euros on the 6th of January 2018. He was loaned to Bayern Munich, scoring a double against his employers just last week in the 2020 Champions League quarterfinals. So another correct answer there for uh, Anthony Banovac takes him to nine um, out of ten. So a fantastic, uh, a fantastic display of of knowledge from uh, from you, Mr. Banovac, and. Um, well played. You will uh, you will win a fifty dollar voucher, which I'll uh, I'll give to Morgan to give to you next time he sees you. Jeez, is he going to uh, get it across to him? Yeah, he's not a chance of him getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for Dean, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, mate. I hope you uh, obviously enjoyed. Uh, just wait for Tonch to put us back uh, up on screen. There you go. There we go. Well, we've got the exclusive that Dane will be wearing the armband at the Grange next year, so that's exciting news. Yeah, that'll be uh, if uh, if uh, the Rayman hasn't already posted it up on uh, social media <laughs> and contacted the Herald Sun, he will do first thing in the morning. So uh, thanks for being part of it, mate. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, Best of luck for uh, for everybody over at Hoppers, a great football club, some great people over there, and uh, wish you all the very best when you, uh, when you do get back up down the field, mate. Cheers, guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Well done, mate. All right. And Anthony, right. congratulations on uh, nine nine out of ten. How did you how did you do it? Was it um, a, a combination of uh, knowledge and uh, a bit of good luck as well? And um, and then uh, almost being psyched out as well on that one that you got wrong as well. <laughs> no, I'm still cursing about that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you do? No, but um, I think it was a bit, a bit of luck on a, on a couple of those questions. And I think Dan got a couple of the more difficult ones as well. I know that I definitely wouldn't have got those. So, yeah, a bit of luck. Very good, mate. Well, listen, you go through to the quarterfinals and join uh, Sebastopol Vikings in the quarterfinals, which will be in about six weeks' time. So uh, next week we've uh, we've got a, a Monday night fixture on Monday. So uh, we'll keep you up to date with everything, mate. I'll send you an email later on this evening with your, with your voucher. Um, 
use it to to good use if you do get through the final on that, on that performance mate there's a very good chance there could be two hundred dollars worth of vouchers coming your way as uh, as the phone starts going and the text starts coming. <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed yeah i'll put it to good use all right mate listen thanks for coming on pleasure speaking to you again mate take care and uh, hopefully see you soon my nah, pleasure's all mine thanks friends Cheers, thanks bye. anthony bye. All right, there you have it. Nine five. So a high scoring quiz tonight for match day two in the uh, the opening round of the Hopheads Football IQ quiz. There you can see Dane finishing on five, Anthony finishing on nine. North Geelong Warriors go through to the next round, and that is the uh, that is the end of uh, match day two, guys. That's some uh, some some uh, some going to get nine out of ten questions because some of those questions were pretty tough, weren't they? Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought so. But um, yeah, certainly uh, Dane got his share of pretty tricky questions as well. So um, yeah, hopefully they were even enough, I suppose. And the, the uh, degree of difficulty was around the sweet spot there still. Well, one stage, Anthony Banovats looked like he might even go for a clean sweep. But then um, then he, he got a couple wrong towards the... Oh, just one wrong. But um, geez, that was a brilliant performance, wasn't it? Unbelievable. And um, look, no... Not taken away from Dane, he, 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 as you said, Steve, he had an absolute purple patch at one stage. So, geez, he did really, really well. He did, yeah. Five in a row there. He got on a real roll. And then um, he did have a bit of bad luck on question one where he could have got off onto a good start, but he got psyched out by the quiz host. So um, he can hold that against Craig perhaps, but yeah, he just put maybe up it wouldn't have affected the result <laughs> either way. <laughs> it's pretty entertaining, I must admit. Yeah, he's just put up on the uh, live comments. Uh, he's just rigged. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair play to him uh great great contestant it was good good show that i enjoyed that really good quiz so um standards there now guys it's um um it's it's set number nine out of ten is uh yeah it's got a beat um so look forward now to monday evening now tonch is the uh is the next game and it's uh st Albans saints against Meadow Park, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. There we, We've got the um, fixtures all done up. Look at that. How quickly do we get it all done up? So let's yeah. just recap. Uh, Hopper's Crossing obviously lost to North Geelong five five goals to nine tonight. Sebastopol Vikings defeated Williamstown six goals to three. So if we did have a ladder on goal difference, North Geelong would be on top by one. But, uh, yeah, the big one on, on Monday morning uh, is our mate Maxi Santich. Is he going to be representing St. Albans? Who's going to be representing St. Albans, Craig? Uh, no, he's not, actually. We've got one of their senior players. Um, can't think of his name. Who was it? Uh, oh, is it Jordan? Jordan oh, Wilkes, yeah. I think. Yeah. Jordan, yeah. He's uh, going to be taking uh, the mantle there for St. Albans. Yeah, uh, we've, we've had him on the show, I think it was last year, wasn't it, on, on one of our episodes. So yeah. no, no stranger to our show. show. And uh, Me Meadow Park, the club that um, – is it Don? Don Don's club? It is Don. Don's involved there, and I think John Fakwahazen is going to come on and represent uh, Meadow awesome. Park. He's got a big, strong Scottish accent, so uh, we might have to slow the questions down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next week, and uh, hopefully, we'll uh, and get maybe, maybe an interpreter in to uh, to help us out next week. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Is that right? Well, there you go. And then um, next um, Thursday, this time next week, Collingwood City taking on. Greenbank Stallion. So uh, there we go. We've got the first two. Um, um, we've got the first two um, um, sides that have advanced through to the um, the uh, quarterfinals. And isn't it interesting that they are both regional clubs? So is 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 it fair to say it, in Victoria all the brains seem to be in the regional areas? Come on, Metropolitan Melbourne. We need you to uh, to to uh, pull the socks up, and at least we'll get one team from uh, Metro Melbourne on match day three entering the um, equation. But, uh, yeah, gents, great job tonight. You did a phenomenal job. Absolutely brilliant. Um, very entertaining too, I must say, both of you. And uh, very suspense, suspenseful, very uh, entertaining. Some great questions probed there by both of you. So, uh, you know, hats off to both of you lads. Well done. Thank you. Just uh, something I forgot to mention earlier on in the news, Stephen. I want to bring it up. I uh, see a uh, comment there from Mark Sultana, the president at uh, George Cross. A uh, lot of talk about interesting times, talk about the B-League. And I should have brought it up, but it was uh, remiss of me not to. So I'm just going to bring it up again. Um, on the 17th of August, the Association um, of Australian Football Clubs uh, were sent an email out to clubs uh, and I'll read the email. It says, we've today written to members to let them know of a meeting to be held on 
uh, next Tuesday, the 25th of August, to discuss the criteria for the National Second Division with public statement being issued after the meeting. We are forging ahead with a view to commencing the National Second Division in 2022. If you're an AAFC member, please check your club email for the details. If you haven't received it, please get in touch with us at blah 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 So the Second Division looks as if it's going ahead. Um, it'd be interesting to see what teams um, have actually had that email and, and where that's going to go. Yeah, that will be interesting. Yeah. I mean, now is the time to start planning. I know economically and what you're not... Um, everyone is going to take a battering, but we keep on saying this is the time to start planning, to start putting together a strategic plan. Um, and, and, and look, they, they ought to be applauded. Look, it might not get off the ground in 2022, even though they're saying it, um, and maybe a year later, but start the ball rolling now, start the plans now. So uh, absolutely fantastic news, that's yeah, for sure. So, uh, stay, stay tuned for that written statement that will come out after the meeting on Tuesday the 25th. Looking forward to seeing what's included in that one, but certainly the intention of 2022 is a is a good one. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully we'll be on air on, on next Wednesday if we, uh, Western United are able to get through um, and then they'll be playing in the sudden death semifinals on Wednesday night. But, uh, yeah, this Sunday night, folks, um, tune into our show. Um, just keep an eye out. An announcement will be made in the next couple of days um, exactly when we will, we will be going to air, um, likely to be a, a special expanded version for the finals. So uh, that's on Sunday night. The kickoff there is 6 p.m., um, Western United taking on uh, Brisbane Raw. should be an absolute fantastic game. We'll talk about that, obviously, um, on Sunday night. But a big, big shout-out to um, our, our two sponsors tonight, Craig and um, Steve. Um, Popheads, Point Cook um, in El and Altona, and also Georgie's on Vista, home of the um, George Cross Football Club. Gents, um, absolutely fantastic to have those two organisations on board. Yeah, yep. it is, mate. And uh, book in for your Father's Day uh, lunch pickup at uh, George Cross there. The advertisement looks quite good, quite enticing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, when this uh, when this whole lockdown business is uh, is out of the way that we uh, we get up to George's and we do a show um, up from the bistro there and um, show them that we, uh, we we we're we're really thankful of the partnership that we've got together because it's a it's a great facility and uh, we wouldn't be able to do this show without uh, without Mark and uh, and the team from George's and of course Adrian and uh, and the Hopheads guys. So big thanks to to everybody that sp uh, sponsors us and uh, please please don't let us stop there. We need as much support as we can. You know we're starting. You can see from the the graphics that we're doing behind the scenes. It's starting to get more professional in what we're doing now. So the more help we can get behind the scenes, the better the show will be, guys, and uh, we can go on to bigger and better things. Absolutely. Before we go, become a member. That's the best way that you as an individual can support us. Um, show your support. Become a member of the Football Outwear Show. It's easy. Just log on to the uh, website. All the details are there below, www.patreon.com forward slash football outwear show. That's www.patreon.com forward slash football outwear show. Massive, massive um, acknowledgement and thank you to, to Paul de Blasi, to Vladimir Zetovich, um, Christopher Cruz and Michael Long, who was doing so well playing at home in the um, in the uh, quiz tonight. They are our members, and we'd love to see by by this time next week. Let's double that. Let's get eight members. It's not a huge outlay, a small monthly outlay that you do um, um, contribute. Uh, it goes to, as Craig said, um, you know, for us improving our our performances. Craig, um, we were sold a, a mixer that was a dud. I'm not even going to mention where we bought that from, but um, we spent something like $400 and it really peeved us off, but we were sold at Doug. We now need to actually buy a proper piece of equipment. That's going to cost us about $1,000, you know? Um, and, and look, you know, we need we need your, your support. We need you to help us because um, otherwise it's simply just going to be kept on being run on a shoestring budget and we are going to keep on struggling the way we're doing. But, um, yeah, look, I'm, I know it sounds like a soft story, but... Top touch. Sorry? Or worse is we stop because we, or we stop. Yeah. So it's it's up to you folks out there. So we really, really do need your support um, um, in a big way. Become a member. www.patreon.com forward slash football out west show. Gents, that brings us to the very end of our show. Hey. 
Yeah, that's it. It's been a pleasure tonight and a good competition, Dane and uh, Anthony. Um, hats off to both of you guys. Well done for providing us with uh, an evening of uh, entertainment and well done to you, uh, Craig, behind the behind the mic there on the questions and um, did a great job, Tonchi, guys. Tonchi, you behind the scenes on all the graphics. Great job tonight. So yeah. very good. Good Craig, night. Uh, good night. Good night, Steve. Good night, Craig. Good night, guys. All the best. Stay safe. And that was Football Out West Show, episode 37. Until next week. Good night and thank you for joining us.